Hello and welcome everyone to this exciting episode of Imaging's Azer Cell Science Series. Uh, my name is Leslie Chong and I'm the CEO and Managing Director at Imaging. I'll be your host today. Uh, today with me is my two exceptional leaders in our company uh, and in the field of oncology drug development, Dr. Woodard and Dr. Bian is here to join me today. So it's great to have, uh, have them both on this show with me. It is not a coincidence that they are both hematology oncologists by training. As physicians, they have worked in several pharmaceutical and biotech companies, not only in blood cancers, but also in solid tumors. Thank you for joining me, Paul and John. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Great. So for the new audience, uh, Imaging is an ASX-listed company. We're developing three potential drug candidates, two in our oncolytic viral therapy, both in solid tumors, and azer cell in hematologic or blood cancers. The focus of our science series today is our allogeneic CAR T cell therapy, azer cell, in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, uh, in autologous CAR T failures. I know that's a mouthful, but we'll go into that in just a second. So back to the basics, Paul. So can you tell the audience what is lymphoma and leukemia? Lymphoma is a cancer of the lymph node tissues, and it tends to be spread throughout the body. And diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is a type of lymphoma. Leukemia is is a cancer of the bone marrow and blood, and that also seems to, uh, tends to circulate throughout the body. Thank you. Uh, but further to that, so can you talk um, about autologous CAR T and how they've emerged in the landscape and how they've revolutionized uh, blood cancer therapy? Yeah, so autologous CAR Ts are when you take uh, blood samples from patients and you isolate the T cells. Then you genetically modify them so they express a protein called an antigen, in this case, CD19. And that protein is found on the surface of certain tumor types or cancers like lymphoma or leukemia. And then you give chemotherapy and infuse those cells back into the patient. And in many cases, that results in a complete remission that seems to be quite durable in many patients. Pretty amazing. Uh, John, can you tell us a little bit about how autologous CAR-T or auto CAR-Ts are administered to patients? Sure. As Paula had mentioned, you know, autologous means the cell source comes from the patient's own body. And it's a pretty complicated and laborious process to make these autologous CAR-T cell products. So the first thing that has to happen is the patient goes into the clinic and they get their uh, blood cells collected uh, in what we call apheresis, and that's you know can be anywhere from four to six hours. After that, the collected cells then get sent to the manufacturing facility, where they get engineered to express the chimeric antigen receptor, and then the cells are expanded to grow enough to be able to treat and dose a patient. That whole process takes anywhere from four to six weeks. And then, as Paul mentioned, uh, before the patient can receive their CAR T cells back, they have to undergo treatment with lymphodepleting chemotherapy, which allows their own T cells to better uh, what we call engraft or you know um, sustain once they get infused back into the patient. That's great. Uh, it's a laborious process. Um, do all patients, are they able to receive their newly engineered auto CAR T? So most patients are. I think the manufacturing process has improved quite a bit uh, since the clinical trials, which you know date back to you know the early 2010s. Uh, that being said, you know some patients will not be able to receive their CAR T product uh, just because they may not be able to collect enough blood cells in order to make enough CAR T cells. And then very occasionally you may get a manufacturing failure for various reasons where the product cannot be safely administered back to the patient. Uh, but thankfully that's pretty rare these days. Thank you. Uh, so what is the difference between auto CAR T versus allogeneic or allo CAR T like Azer cell? Yeah, so what allogeneic just means, it's a fancy word for saying that 
the cells come from someone else. So uh, unlike autocar-T, they're not made from the patient's own blood cells. So what we do for Azure Cell is we collect blood cells from healthy volunteer donors. They undergo a very similar manufacturing process. The one big difference is that we do this in advance and then freeze down the cells. So whenever a patient is ready to receive Azure Cell, all they have to do is you know, schedule their time in the clinic, get their lymphodepleting chemotherapy, and then receive Azure Cell. So theoretically, if a patient is ready, they can actually get infused with Azure Cell within five to seven days. That's great. So before we talk about our recent Azure Cell data, uh, we have added in combination with Azure Cell a low dose of IL-2. Uh, would you mind explaining what IL-2 is and, and how it's helpful for Azure Cell? Yeah, absolutely. So IL-2 is a protein. It's made by immune cells and primarily T cells in our body. And so the normal function of IL-2 is to act as a growth signal for their T cells, tell them to multiply and activate and help fight off infections. However, we're leveraging the same biology in Azure Cell really to have a little bit of extra IL-2 to help Azure Cell multiply better and have a better response against patients' tumors, in which in this case, DLBCL. That's great. How long have you seen IL-2 be sustained, uh, Azure Cell T cells to be proliferated in our, in our current patient population? Yeah, uh, so I think in the longest we've been able to detect Azure Cell, again, this is circulating in the blood, so it may not accurately reflect how it's distributed in the body, but in some patients, we can detect Azure Cell in the blood out two or three months or even longer. Pretty amazing. Paul, finally, uh, can you talk us through our recent uh, promising data that we just released? Yes, yeah, so these are patients with a type of lymphoma, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma or DLBCL, who've received multiple different types of therapy. So they've had the first line of chemotherapy plus an antibody. Unfortunately, their disease came back. Then they've received other therapies like other chemotherapies or other antibody treatments. Um, and they've all received an autologous CAR-T and had their disease come back. These patients have had four or five or six different types of therapy. And it's these patients we've treated with Azer cell plus our lymphodepletion plus our low-dose IL-2 treatment. And that's where we're seeing very good response rates, 57% complete remission rate, and it looks durable. Our longest patient is getting close to a year. Our second longest patient is now more than six months. So we're very encouraged about this data. That's encouraging for sure. Uh, I really love thinking about these patients after they felt at least four lines of therapy to come on our study and going on almost a year of complete response, meaning there is no uh, existence of tumors in their body. So um, I think these are wonderful results uh, for the patients and for the company. Uh, I would really like to thank Paul and John for joining me today. Thanks, guys. You're thank welcome. You. Well, this concludes our science series on Azer cell and auto and allocartes. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>